Hello friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so excited to share with you a fun summer sweat proof makeup routine for those of us with mature skin who are in our 50s, 60s, 70s and beyond. If you're new to this channel, please let me extend a very warm welcome. My name is Elise and as a professional working makeup artist who specializes in helping those of us who are over 50 look on the outside like we feel on the inside, I love to share with you tips and techniques that will really work for us in our life now. And by the way, during the last few pretty crazy months we've all experienced, I've had a number of you ask me if I do personal makeup consultations via Zoom. So I just wanted to let you know that yes, I do indeed do personal makeup consultations on Zoom and they are so much fun. So I've included in the description box below my contact information if you're interested in getting in touch with me. So let's get into today's topic. A couple of years ago, I had an experience which I will frankly never forget. I was looking forward to walking around one of the beautiful Minneapolis, Minnesota lakes with a former work colleague since it looked like it was going to be one of those gorgeous top 10 summer weather days. Although I knew it was going to be very hot, I neglected unfortunately to check what the humidity level was going to be. My only lame excuse quite honestly for neglecting to check is that we'd moved to a far drier climate a few years before and frankly I'd simply gotten out of the habit of checking that which I used to always do in the summer in Minneapolis. Well the humidity level was extremely high, there were few clouds in the sky and after the first mile of our walk I wasn't just glistening, I was out and out sweating. And not only that, but the sweat was literally dripping down my face and neck and it was taking my makeup along with it. Well, the summertime heat is definitely here for most of us. And the question is, how can we look our calm and cool best when the temperatures start to soar? So I'd love to share with you today 12 tips to create a sweat proof summer makeup look. And I'll also be using a few fun new products along the way. I'm going to start with my eye makeup since there's always a little fallout from powder eyeshadow, which I really don't want to get on my face makeup. I did apply my serums that I normally put on in the morning already and I have done a little bit of my makeup as you can see. I've done my eyebrows and I've done some eye primer but let me go through with you what my process is for that. So here's tip number one. The first thing I do is take a cotton ball or a Kleenex and I absorb any oil that's on my eyelid. Then I apply an eye primer over my entire eyelid area. While that's drying I then do my eyebrows. And after my eyebrows are done, I will put some translucent powder, a very light amount, over my eyelids. So let me share with you the products that I've used for this. For my eye primer, I've used the Urban Decay Eye Primer in Eden. That color matches my skin color pretty closely, although it is a tiny bit lighter. So while this was drying, then I went ahead with my eyebrows. And what I used first is this e.l.f. eyebrow pencil. It has a spoolie on one end and the eyebrow pencil obviously on the other end. And I have been so surprised by this product. Frankly, it glides on more easily and I like the color payoff better than a lot of the high-end products that I've been using. So this was just a fun, great find and I highly recommend it. I'm using the color taupe, which is actually a little bit lighter than I normally use, but sometimes I like to just start light and then build it. After applying the e.l.f. eyebrow pencil, I next use this particular product from Maybelline. It's their Tattoo Studio Pomade and this is in a little bit deeper color. It's a medium brown. I really like using this cream pomade because it not only will stay on through any kind of hot weather, but it also provides a very nice professional look. It fills in the brows extremely well. So I like to outline the top of my brow and underneath my brow with the pomade, then fill in just a little bit. Not a lot because a little bit of this product goes a very long way and you don't need much at all. And then I sweep it through 
with my spoolie. This is the tool that comes with this product. On one end is a spoolie and on the other end is the slanted angled eyebrow brush. It works very well. And then for a final finishing touch, I use this eyebrow gel from Almay called the Brow Styler. And the reason I use that is because on a hot sweaty day, I really want my brows to stay in place. And there are some definite wiry areas on the ends of my brows. And this really keeps them in place perfectly throughout a hot summer day. The next step after doing my eyebrows was to apply the translucent powder over my entire area, just a very tiny little bit. That just provides an added barrier to prevent any kind of creasing or smudging from your eyeshadow on a very hot day. But you don't want to add too much because if you do, you can't get quite as much pigment payoff from your eyeshadow. The reason I used an eyebrow pencil, which has a waxy quality to it, and an eyebrow cream pomade is because eyebrow powder simply doesn't stand up well under high humidity. So my second tip obviously is to use an eyebrow pencil or pomade or better yet a 24 hour waterproof brow product. Now let's go ahead and move on to our eyeshadow. I'm going to use a gorgeous small spring and summer look eyeshadow palette from Viseart called the Viseart Petite Pro 5 Soleil palette which by the way I have never used before. I bought it over the holiday season because I absolutely fell in love with the colors even though it's a color palette that is not normally something I'd wear as a cool tone person. But I do love mixing a little bit of cool tone with warm tone. And when I show you this palette, I think you'll see why I bought it, especially because it was on sale over the holidays. Unfortunately, it is no longer. But Viseart is more of a high end eyeshadow product. They have gorgeous quality, wonderful quality products, but they now have started to come out with some smaller, more affordable eyeshadow palettes. And this is the color story of the palette on the inside. I think you can probably see why I fell in love with it. They're not only some absolutely gorgeous sunset and sunrise colors, but there's also a beautiful purple in this palette. And probably the combination of these colors is what sold me. I'm also going to use a little bit of this Natasha Denona palette called the Lila palette. I'm going to be using the color Flint, which is that neutral color to start in my crease area. The color I'm starting with is this color in the palette right here, Flint. And I'm going to just start in the middle of my crease area with a soft fluffy brush, just so I don't deposit a whole lot of color. I really want it to be pretty diffuse. As you can see, I'm starting to get a little bit of definition in this brow area. And I'm bringing it straight across to lift the eye area. And I'll go ahead and do the other side. Okay, I have a little bit of definition in that crease area and slightly above the crease. Because I do have hooded eyes, I do like to bring my color slightly above. So when I look straight ahead, you can actually see the color. And I sometimes like to look up slightly because this gives you a good indication of whether you're even in your application. And I have a little bit more product on this eye than this eye. So I'm going to add a little bit more to this eye. So I'm just tilting my head back a little bit to check out how that application is looking. So next I'm going to go into the Soleil palette and I'm going to start with this, this color up here. There are no names for these colors, so I'm just going to have to point so you see which one I'm using. This lighter color on the top row. I'm wiping my brush off and I want to show you what I'm using. This is a handy little gadget, which I don't think I've ever talked about on my channel. It's called a shadow switching pan. And when you want to use the same brush again, all you need to do is wipe it around here and that will take off the powder so you can move on. The center section is for cream shadows. Now I'm going to go in with a pencil brush and I'm going to use a little bit of that yellow color on the far end and have a gradient going into the deeper color on the outer corner of my eye. Now as you see that yellow color looks a little scary but it really doesn't come off. 
as deep as it looks. But you can see a little bit of this lighter yellow on the inner corner of my eye area. And I'm using it there just to brighten up that inner corner. Next, I'm going to take another pencil brush and I'm going to go in with that lighter violet color right here. I'm taking it in the crease and then slightly above the crease. Oh, this is a gorgeous color. And because I want to more densely pack on some powder in the outer V area going into my outer seven, I'm going to use this flat brush which can pick up some more product. And I'm dipping it into that dark purple color on the bottom row. I'm going to pack that color onto the outer corner of my eye, up into the crease and Again, creating that outer seven. Now because I did put the translucent powder on earlier, I'm not getting quite as much color payoff as I would if I had not applied the translucent powder. But the translucent powder is helping to keep everything in place. So you might have to apply a little bit more to get the color payoff that you want. Do the other eye and hopefully I can get them to match. That's always the challenge. Now you can see this is all looking a little bit messy, which is just fine because now I'm going to blend it all together. Now since I lost a little bit of that orange, I'm going to go back and apply a little bit more to this part. Now I'm taking a little bit more of that lighter violet color. I'm applying it just to meet up with the darker color on the outer part of my eye. So I'm going to go into the Natasha Denona palette, the Mini Lila palette, and I'm going to use this color second from the end. And I'm going to pat that color just in the center of my eyelid just to lighten up that area. Then I'm going to take a little bit of the shimmery gold color on the bottom row to put on the inner corner of my eye. And I'm going to put a little bit of this color right here just under the arch of my eyebrow. Okay, I hope you can see the final look here. I'm going to take my blending brush now and just do a final blend so everything works together. So now with my eyeshadow in place, we'll move on to tip number three, which is to use waterproof eyeliner and mascara. But because of how sensitive my eyes are, I cannot use waterproof mascara. But I will be using a water-resistant eyeliner from Doll 10, which has a really wonderful, nice self-sharpening feature. So I've gone ahead and added eyeliner. I use this eyeliner from Doll 10, as I mentioned earlier. It is in a cobalt blue. But since I wanted to make more of a violet blue, what I did was I put some powder eyeshadow over the blue eyeliner. So what I used was this deep poisonberry color from the Natasha Denona palette and I also used some of that poisonberry color just to deepen up the outer V area of my eyes. I also put a tiny bit just on the outer third underneath my eyes. Now we're going to be moving on to mascara. And as I mentioned, I can't use waterproof mascara because I have very sensitive eyes. So I am going to try a brand new mascara today. This is one that's from the makeup brand called Ilia, which is a clean makeup brand. So it should be okay for my sensitive eyes. We'll find out. First, I'm going to curl my lashes. I don't know if you can tell what a difference that makes with that curl on that side. 
And here is the Ilya, just a small sample size that I'm trying out. This wasn't what I was expecting. It has a huge brush. So far I'm liking it. And by the way, let me show you the self-sharpening feature on this Doll 10 eyeliner. When you put the top back on the eyeliner, you're automatically sharpening it again. So when you open it up, you have a nice sharpened point once again. Since my eyes are now done, let's go on next to tackle the face makeup, which is some of the most important steps that we can take. As I mentioned earlier, I've already applied my face serums. And the next step, which is tip number four, is to use a toner before our moisturizer, which helps tighten up the pores. This is the toner I'm going to use. It's from Thayer's. It comes in several different fragrances. This happens to be unscented. So you can use a cotton pad. I'm just going to use a cotton ball and I'm just going to go over all of my face, especially the area where I have issues with pores, which is right on my nose and next to my nose, my forehead as well. It also just feels wonderful on the skin. It has witch hazel in it, which is a really interesting ingredient. It gives a really nice feel. You can almost feel your skin tightening. It's not a tingling sensation, but it really does feel good. It feels like it's really freshening up your whole complexion. So moisturizer comes next. And tip number five is to use a lighter moisturizer than you're perhaps used to using, either a liquid or a gel. I'm going to use Essential by Adele, which I absolutely love. It's lightweight and it has a wonderful combination of botanicals and therapeutic grade essential oils. There's no SPF, but I did apply my SPF earlier. And just to let you know, there is a 20% off coupon code in the description box, just in case you'd like to check Check out this particular moisturizer by Adele. This is what it looks like. It also comes in a wonderful travel size, which I always keep in the glove compartment of my car. I'm using it constantly because I always tend to forget to put on my hand moisturizer before I leave the house. Oh, this feels so good. It also has a wonderful clean smell to it, which dissipates pretty quickly and it absorbs so well into the skin. It does not feel the least bit greasy, which is another important thing, I think, to most of us with our moisturizer. Our next tip, which is tip number six, it's a bit unusual. Apply a small amount of milk of magnesia to your face with a cotton ball. Now, you use this as your primer and you dab it onto your T-zone area. It will leave a whitish cast on your face, but you don't have to worry about this because you'll be covering it up with makeup. And by the way, the key phrase here is small amount. Or if you're not comfortable with that, you can use a waterproof matte face primer, which I'm going to be using. This is my Eve Pearl moisturizing treatment. Very lightweight. And step number seven is something that you probably wouldn't expect either, but now is the time to spray your face with a setting spray. And you want to be sure that it's a setting spray rather than a finishing spray. I'm going to be using Urban Decay's All Nighter Setting Spray. This is what it looks like. I'm just going to shake it a little bit first and then I'm going to hold it at a distance. And those just few sprays just pretty much covered my entire face area. Then once the setting spray dries, we can move on to the next step, which is the foundation. The foundation tip, which is tip number eight, is to use a small amount of an oil-free, long-lasting liquid foundation only on the key areas, and then to blend it out with a slightly dampened beauty sponge. Or instead of a foundation, you could also use a lightweight creamy concealer. You want to pat the concealer on with a dampened beauty sponge, but only on the areas where you need to cover redness or discoloration. And then it's also important to blend out the edges so there are no discernible lines. I'm going to go ahead and use this product by Clinique. It's their Even Better Foundation. I'm just going to put a little bit on the back of my hand and I'm just going to dab a little bit only on the places where I need it the most. Then I'm going to take my blending brush and give it a good blend. And 
you do want to bring it down onto your neck area so you don't have any lines where your foundation stops and starts. Didn't use very much, but it's really giving just a light coverage to my face. And then I'm going to take my Dampened Beauty Blender and I'm just going to go over and pat this into my face. This also just feels wonderful on a hot day and you're adding a little bit of moisture at the same time. This is absorbing any excess product, really just pushing the foundation a little bit more thoroughly into your skin. Now there are just a couple of areas where I need some additional coverage. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Foundation and just dot a couple areas. This is where I have my, my issues along my jawline. And then once again I'm going to take my sponge and I'm just going to pat so there's no demarcation, just blend it in thoroughly. One of the reasons I love this Real Technique sponge is because of the angle, which makes it really easy to get into all those little crevices and corners. So tip number nine relates to blush. I usually love using a cream blush, but for our sweat proof makeup routine, it's really best to use a cheek stain or a cheek tint or a powder blush. And I'm going to be going ahead and using the powder blush. The one I'm going to be using is a brand new product for me. It's the Hourglass Ghost Ambient Lighting Edit Palette. And I'm going to be using it for my blush, my bronzer, and my highlighter. And it's best to go ahead and blend in all of these products with a dampened beauty sponge. This is what the Hourglass Palette looks like. On the top, these two powders here are finishing powders, which you can just sweep over your entire face. The last powder here is what they call a strobe powder, which has a little bit more highlight to it. And you do want to put that in areas where you don't have any fine lines because it can magnify fine lines. Then there's a bronzer, as you can see on the bottom row, and then there are two blushes. The blush in the center has a little bit more pigment to it. It also has a little bit more glow to it. So you have to be a little bit careful with this palette from what I've heard because it does have very strong pigmentation. So I'm going to go ahead and get my damp sponge and I'm going to first apply the powder bronzer, followed by the blush and then the highlighter. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this bronzer because I know it's pretty pigmented and I don't want to get too much. I'm just going to go along under my cheekbone and create a little bit more delineation in my face. And by the way, this particular bronzer color is more of a neutral to cool tone, so it does work pretty well as a contour. And as you can see, using the sponge really makes it blend into the face, so it's pretty seamless. I'm going to go ahead and put some under my jawline as well. And then bring it down onto my neck. I put a little bit just along my upper forehead area because I have a pretty high forehead. And then bring it down here. Then I'm going to take the other end of my sponge and I'm first going to apply the lighter blush. And just right here. Oh, that's such a pretty color. By the way, I had been wanting to get this palette for months. It first came out over the holidays and it is an $80 palette and I just couldn't bring myself to spend that much money. And I kept thinking about it and kept thinking about it and I kept hearing that although I don't normally use powder products that it really worked well on mature skin. And I also kept hearing that there's really a lot of product in these pans, so it will last a long time. And then I saw it go on sale. <laughs> so I recently purchased it from the Hourglass site. I don't know if the sale is still going on or not, but I did get a very good price on it, which I was thrilled about. Now I'm going to take the center blush color, which is a little bit stronger. I'm just going to dot a tiny bit of that right at the top of where I was applying my blush. Gives a little bit more glow. 
And then I'm going to take the highlighter and just put it right here again with my dampened sponge. I also put a little bit above my cupid's bow. I'm also going to be using these two colors which are finishing powders as highlighters and just go in a little bit under my eyes in the middle of my forehead and in my chin area. Now sometimes it's hard to tell in the lights of my studio how well I've blended things quite honestly but I think I think we're doing okay. At least as far as I can see it looks pretty I really love that blush. I'm, I'm shocked. I'm surprised. It's even nicer than I thought it would be. The other fun thing you can do with this palette is to take the brighter strobe light color on the far end on the top and you can use it in the center of your eyelid. So I'm just going to try a little bit of that. Just, oh yeah, it just brightens that area. Interesting. Can you see the difference between the two? I'm not sure how well it's showing up. Then I'm also going to take a brush and I'm going to take a little bit, just a little bit of the finishing powder and I'm going to put it over this area, just a tiny little bit. So we've applied our blush and our bronzer with the dampened beauty blender as well as our highlight. So on to tip number 11 which is to gently roll loose translucent powder onto our t-zone and forehead with a brush or a beauty sponge. I'm going to go in with my finishing powder. You could also use a translucent powder as I mentioned but I'm going to try the finishing powders and I'm going to use my dampened sponge to just apply this final finishing touch. And I'm going to mix the two finishing powder colors. What this does is it just gives a subtle glow to the skin. Now if you used a translucent powder you wouldn't be getting the glow necessarily. If you definitely don't want glow, and some of you may not, especially if you have oilier skin, then sticking with a translucent powder would probably be a good way to go. And by the way, when you do get this product, there is a card that comes with it that explains what each of the pans is and how to apply them and where to apply them. Well, we've reached step number 12, our final step, and it's to give our face a final spray with our setting spray. So I'm going to go ahead just do a couple pumps and that should do it. So this is the final look. What I did do was add bottom lash mascara and I also used my Color Science product. This is a color corrector that I put under my eye that also has an SPF on it. And by the way, I will put all of these products in the description box. I added a little bit of concealer and then put a tiny bit of powder over it so it wouldn't crease and then added my lipstick. I used my Age Perfect Lip Liner and lipstick. So those are the 12 tips for a sweat proof makeup look for the summer. So the next time you have a summer event to attend, which we all hope we can do safely sometime soon, Choose whatever tips you feel might work the very best for you out of these 12. And be sure to give your new sweat proof beauty routine a run through before the big event just so you have a chance to practice. And going back to my earlier mention of my ill-fated walk around the lake, I have to confess that the next time it's in the 90s with 70% or above humidity, and my friend and I want to do some serious walking, I'm going to suggest that we head to one of the air-conditioned malls when it's safe to do so. I do hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, I also hope you'll give it a thumbs up, because giving a video a thumbs up on YouTube helps any channel's visibility. And it also helps a channel grow, because the video will then show up as a suggested video to other people. And many of you have made comments on some of my previous videos that you'd love to see my channel grow, which means so very much to me, and I thank you so much for that. And one way you can help my channel grow is by giving videos a thumbs up. And I thank you so much if you decide to do so. And in the comments section below, it would be wonderful if you would share any tips you've used to help your makeup last longer during the hot summer months. 
It's wonderful getting to know so many of you through these comments that you make on my videos, and I'm really grateful for the wonderful community of friends that we're developing. Thank you so much for giving me the gift of your time today, and I do hope that you stay happy and especially healthy and have a fabulous rest of your day. Take care.